Thank you so much, Eric, for the filler. <laughs> so, sorry for that, a little hiccup. I mean, we can't start a day without something happening, right? So, uh, so as Eric uh, introduced, uh, I'm Srushit Repakula. I'm the head of engineering at Confab, and I'm also an AWS serverless hero. So today I'll be sharing the stage with the rest of the serverless heroes uh, privilege. We have been doing this, I think, for the third time. And I hope uh, a few of you have watched us, the panel, I think, a couple of years back. OK, bit, bit, uh, so today I'll be talking about serverless, fast to market, faster to the future. So I'll be talking about our journey with Confab, what we have built, how serverless has enabled us, and everything about it. Oh, sorry. What if I told you the difference between building a full-fledged application for a six-month development cycle versus a 15-day sprint is not the uh, talent, it's not the team, it's not the funding, but rather it is about refusing to build something that already exists, right? So with serverless, as you all might have already understood, it's about consuming various services. There are a lot of building blocks. You can bring all of them together and build your own application. And today, I'll show you how we built a full-featured event networking app faster than most teams uh, complete their first sprint. And this is not going to be our launch story. I'm not going to talk about our struggles as a startup, what we did, how many nights we spent. Not that for another day, probably. But I'll be talking about how serverless enabled us the philosophy and the strategic approach that helped us in the past and empowers us today and helps us innovate faster in the future. I'll be talking about our journey and walk you through the different phases of it. And this isn't luck. This is the future of how successful teams build applications. In the traditional approach, it probably could have taken a few months for us to build what we wanted to build. As I told you, we wanted to build an event networking app, the one that you're all using right now. So we ha wanted to have multiple features in it, uh, ability to chat with other people, ability to network, ability to personalize your agenda, have set up meetings, and a bunch of things. So in the traditional approach, it probably could have taken a few months to be able to achieve that. But in our case, what did we do? Our serverless strategy, we were able to do everything in 15 days. From brainstorming, the first few days we spent on wireframing, brainstorming, understanding the requirements, how to do it, what's the best way to do it, and then we started uh, uh, building it. We have initially worked on real-time chat application, which you all can use uh, on the conference app that uh, Eric had already shown, and we used AppSync's real-time subscriptions for the same. And then, and then we went on to build cross-platform notifications and UI polishing, and then testing and development. All of it in 15 days. Of course, there was a lot of pressure on us to finish this in 15 days. But again, what is life without pressure, right? So what exactly did we ship in 15 days? Was the ability for approximately 3,000 to 4,000 users to be able to chat with others simultaneously, instant push notification to the devices. Uh, spoiler alert, you'll see that in action in some time. Um, QR code-based uh, exchange, like uh, if if you, are, if you want to network with another attendee, you don't have to ask them, where do you work? What is your name? What is your designation? No, you have a QR code, you have the app, scan it, you have their details. Of course, provided they give you the consent, because privacy is important, right? Personalized schedules and meeting booking and white-labeled branding solution. All of this we built in 15 days. Now, what was the secret? We composed solutions instead of building them. We, as I told you, we have AppSync, we have SNS, we have a lot of these services already available on AWS. Almost all of them are serverless in nature. And we just brought them together, stitched into a workflow that uh, is uh, uh, in, in line to our requirements, and we were able to do that. 15 days to the launch was just the beginning. But how does this philosophy and the strategy empower us today? That's what I'm going to uh, uh, briefly touch upon. On the business side, it has helped us quite a lot. 80% uh, uh, faster uh, uh, go-to-market. As we all know, one of the biggest advantages of serverless is you can get started instantly. You can go to market as early as possible. And as a startup, it is very important for us to evaluate our ideas 
to make sure that we are on the right path before we can go full blown. So with serverless, it helped us go much faster, approximately 80% faster. Then we had 60% less operational overhead, uh, which helped in reducing the costs. Feature velocity. Because we were trying to consume things which are battle tested and available on AWS, we were able to push features to production much quicker uh, than what we were used to do earlier. And the most important part is the team, the developers at the core of it, right? Since we were able to innovate faster, we were able to retain much more, and the developers really loved it. Because they got the chance to work on something new and exciting much more frequently than it, what it was earlier. Now, these are all not just business, uh, uh, not just technical wins. These are business advantages as well, which uh, compound over time and has helped us uh, immensely. Now, how does it empower us today? The tech side of things. Uh, as I told you, the networking app, uh, one of the uh, uh, features uh, that I talked about. Then we also have automatic payout processing. If you are aware about Confub, which is an event ticketing platform, where basically people buy tickets and organizer or hosts their event, and Confub collects the amount, and then we have to disperse the amount back to the organizer, right? Uh, we are like a middleman. Now we have to take our cut, and give the rest of the money to the organizer because that is theirs. Now, we built this entire workflow of uh, uh, computing the uh, amount that needs to be done and then pushing it to uh, 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 get, uh, calling a payment gateway and triggering an API to send the money to the organizer. And I'm sure if you, if you have attended a few of my previous talks, you probably would have heard this story already, but I thought it's very important to talk about it because it gave us immense power when we moved to step functions. It was crazy of how we initially built everything in code. And now imagine, it's not one event, right? There are hundreds and thousands of events that is happening on the platform with hundreds and thousands of organizers hosting their event, with hundreds and thousands of transactions happening and so many payouts to go to the organizers. It was crazy. And we did start with everything in the code, right? We looped through every event. It was horrible. And then we said, no, this is not the way of doing it. We moved it to step functions, and now you would not believe it. If I had more time, I would have probably shown the step function. <laughs> but, but we moved all of the looping. I'm sure Eric is going to cover that in his talk about map state and parallel and everything. So it eased out crazily. The code is much more slim, easy to read, easy to maintain, and most importantly, easy to debug, right? Because you don't have so much of complexity. And with serverless, everybody talks about so many components, so many services being used. Yes, but it increases uh, the uh, architecture components, but decreases the complexity in your code, right? The second one is the event-driven notifications, where, think of it, um, uh, we wanted to make sure that the app is proactive than just responding. So something happens, as Nick has talked about. When something happens, you want to push something out. So we had a bunch of event-driven uh, stuff uh, built into the application, which we will show in a minute. And the next one is the AI-powered networking suggestions. Uh, this is not live on the app yet, so you will not be able to see it. Yes, but we recently built this, but I thought, you know, why not uh, talk about it? So we built this, can you believe it, in a couple of days. All thanks to serverless. Right? It was, it was simply talking to Bedrock and make sure that uh, it understands and bring up the connections and everything. So it was just a couple of days. It's not live, it'll be soon. And now what I want you to do, as Eric did, everybody please take out your phones, scan this QR code. It's going to take to the same page where you were earlier. It's essentially the same QR code. So I want all of you to please do that. I have very little time left, <laughs> so but I want everybody to try it out. And everybody just keep the app open, or if you're using it in the browser, just keep the browser open. And uh, uh, now what we are gonna do is, uh, we're gonna push a notification to all of you. I hope the demo guys are on my side today. I'm doing it live and not with the app in my hand. So one of my colleagues is going to push a notification. Hemant, can you please do that? I hope, I hope you got it, Garrett. Yeah, okay, thank God, thank God, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> right, so what you saw is real-time subscriptions built on AppSync. 
I'm going to go faster now. So what we were doing is just scratching the surface uh, with serverless. The real excitement is about what it brings us in the future. And let me show you four problems that we are trying to solve where serverless is immensely going to help us. Uh, the first one is AI ML integration, which one example that I already showed. And there are much more that we are bringing into the uh, application. And the biggest advantage is a lot of teams do not have the power or the money to be able to run AI infrastructure, right? So we would rather rely on uh, uh, services that is already available, like Bedrock, to be able to do that for us. Edge computing for global events. As you know, we are in the events industry. Now, we run events across the globe. Right? Now, it is very important to make sure that whenever someone is hitting a page, it renders as quickly as possible. So we are, we are, we are uh, using Lambda at Edge with CloudFront, a bunch of caching uh, in place to make sure things are working fine. All of this serverless, even driven everything. One example, which you right, already saw, and a few more that we are bringing up with even driven, a simple example that I would like to give you. As you saw, we after every session which you will see, there will be a QR code posted asking everybody to please scan the QR code, submit the feedback, everything. Now that is monotonous. We can't ask you every single time. What if the app was, as I said, proactive than just responding or reactive? The moment the, uh, the session is over, because we have an agenda, we are running on time, uh, so every session, ends after a time, if the app could automatically push a message to all the app users saying, please submit the feedback, or let's say, for example, I'm talking about Bedrock. What if uh, the, app, the application could understand what the user is talking about and push relevant resources onto the devices so that the users don't have to take screenshots, the uh, content is already available on the app. And then the last one is the sustainability uh, as a competitive advantage. As we know, sustainability is not any more optional. Right? We all have to care about the planet. And with serverless, it comes by default because we are not uh, uh, paying for idle resources. We are only paying for how much we consume. So it, uh, it's not optional anymore. With serverless, uh, it is not about how much faster we uh, go today, but it is about being ready for tomorrow. And with serverless, that enables us. The question isn't whether you can afford it to use serverless, but whether can you afford not to. That's it from my side, and uh, if you have any questions, I'll be around, you can ask me.